Hey, welcome to the Learning to Lead podcast happening live right now at Victory Conference. We're in our final night with Pastor Dr. Darius Daniels. <laughs> and uh, Darius, it's your first time to Tulsa, Oklahoma. It is. And, uh, you know, I was born and raised in Mississippi, oh, so really? in the South. And so it feels that way. It's yeah. cordial and warm. Warm when I say the personality of other people. It's great. It kind of feels like home, even though it's Come my first on. time here. Tulsa's a good city. Now you, but you live in New Jersey. I'm a Jersey boy now. You, how long have you lived in Jersey? 2001, I went to New Jersey. So wow. that's a long time. And did you have family when you moved there? Not, didn't know a single soul. I wow. only went there. And the first time I stepped foot in New Jersey was when I was moving into uh, the place I was going to stay, going to seminary. Wow. I'd never been there before. Wow. Yeah. Come on. Well, we're going to hear more about his story and uh, how God has just elevated his ministry, uh, multiplied their church, their campuses, his speaking. But give everyone just a quick kind of glance at who is Darius Daniels. For those that don't know you out there that are listening, give them a little taste of who you are. Yeah, well, son of a pastor. Come on. Born in a small town in Mississippi. I grew up in a town, 830 people. Uh, was pursuing a career in law, felt God shifted me to use my life to serve him and to serve his church, made a decision that I was going to do that, um, eventually married my college sweetheart, who's my wife now. We moved to New Jersey while I was in seminary there, met this one professor, and through him, something started stirring in me to plant the kind of church that he talked about was possible. Wow. And so we launched out and we did that and uh, committed to serve that church as long. Uh, we do a number of different things, but what makes my heart beat without a doubt is the local church and the privilege I get to lead it and serve it and to lead one and carve out a work in a region where the gospel has not taken as much territory as we need to take, specifically wow. in the Northeast. Wow, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I grew up my whole life in Tulsa, Oklahoma, but I've always heard those, you know, phrases, oh, East Coast is so hard to reach. East Coast, <laughs> they're cold-hearted towards Jesus. And, you know, I meet people that come here from the East Coast. I'm like, well, they, they seem pretty sweet and yeah. nice. Yeah. But it's probably a whole nother ball game planting a church and trying to reach people that aren't Christians on the East Coast. What's that been like for y'all? Well, I think it was a little different for me because I come from Mississippi. And so yeah. my father's a pastor. I was there the first, what, 18, 19 years of my life. I've been in church my entire life. So Come on, PKs. <laughs> yeah. So when I left Mississippi, I might have been 22 years old or something. That means I've been in church 22 years and nine months. My entire wow. life I've been in church. You and me um, both. <laughs> so it was... It was, it was a little different. Uh, I think each area, though, has its own set of challenges and barriers. And so I try to do my best, at least, to stay away from comparing mm -hmm. one set of challenges in a region to another. That's good. Uh, because there are people who are in the Bible Belt who have oh, barriers yeah. um, attempting to, uh, th barriers as they attempt to try to get people to see that they may not be in the space with God that they think they are. Yeah. So we all have our own set of barriers and yeah. challenges. That's just the one God called me to serve and to try to help break. Man. And you have two kids, two sons. Two boys. What's their names? Gabriel is my youngest. Seth is my oldest. They are sports boys. Come on. Football. I'm not a fan of that, but football. Really? Why man, not? Man, I'm a fan of football. I love football. I'm not a fan of my kids playing. Oh, yeah. But, you know, they do. Just getting hit. Oh, man. In the head. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. So um, I think their mom does better at that sometimes than me really? <laughs> watching them. But football, lacrosse, soccer, basketball, great kids. We've wow. been really, we've been really blessed. That's in awesome. In that regard. That's awesome. Lacrosse is not a big sport in Oklahoma. Really? But, but I, obviously <laughs> it is probably near some of those Ivy League schools on the East Coast. I could see lacrosse. lacrosse was lacrosse big in Mississippi or no? Not at all. I'd yeah. never, honestly, I'd never heard of lacrosse yeah. until I got to New Jersey. Yeah. It's huge. That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay, so 
Um, you've been leading your church now. It's uh, for more than 12 years, you said. 12, yeah. Uh -huh. um, get ready to launch a campus in Orlando yeah. this next year. Got a campus in L.A., got another campus in New Jersey. Talk a little bit about just the leadership um, mantle that you feel like it, it requires, stepping into leading people in different communities and for you, your own journey of growing as a leader. You grew up under a pastor, yeah. which is, you know, great. In my opinion, my dad was a pastor. He was a great leader. Mm -hmm. um, talk about your own journey of stepping into leadership, taking off the capa you know, the cap of your capacity to be able to multiply and, and develop new campus pastors and all of that. Yeah, well, I will say that in each phase of my leadership journey, I felt like I was at my capacity, if that makes sense. So even when I planted a church, so I grew up in a context where there wasn't um, much church planting. Uh, a lot of the churches in Mississippi were, at least in the rural area I grew up in, were already established churches. They'd been around for years. Many of them were denominational churches. So this whole idea of church planting was foreign. So even though I grew up as a pastor's kid and I got to see some leadership stuff, it was in a certain context. And you know this, context is everything. Yeah. Yeah, it is everything because you can't lead the same way in every context. So it's contextual and it's also situational. Like Moses bringing Israel out of Egypt required one kind of leadership model and style, very shepherding, very pastoral. Joshua taking them into Canaan was a different kind of leadership temperament and personality, very assertive and apostolic, if you will. So planting a church was daunting for me, but I feel like God used the assignment to show me capacity and potential I had that I didn't know was there. It was either sink or swim. And with each phase of our journey, whether it's planting the initial campus, expanding to another one, trying to do something all the way in a different part of the country on the West Coast, and now trying to plant this campus in Orlando, in each phase of the journey, God shows capacity that he's placed on the inside to manage it. And um, it's almost, if I can be frank, sometimes it feels like you, <laughs> you sink or you swim. Yeah. yeah, but that's been my experience. No, I love it. I love it. You, you discover, I mean, Bishop Jakes was talking about this the other night. You discover... You discover you have more inside you than you realize yeah. as you're placed in those environments. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, something that's stirred in me stepping into this role when my father passed is I discovered there's more inside me than I thought there was. Yeah. And there's still more. Yeah. Which is an exciting Come journey. On. Yeah. You know, for, for all of us is that as long as there's breath in our lungs, as long as we have a desire to learn, we're going to keep discovering there's more in us for whatever, whatever it is we're facing. Yeah. So... Um, do you have a favorite like book that you're reading or that you've read in the last year that you recommend a book that's kind of or been on your radar in the last couple of years that you've leadership wise I'm reading this is for me now and I've read tons and, and, and I'm not comparing book to book and I'm talking about where I am in my life in leadership I'm reading right now the most impactful leadership book that 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 I can remember Really? It's called Next Generation Leader by Andy Stanley. Wow. Have you read it? Uh, Have, I've seen the book cover. I don't know how old it is. I don't, I don't know I've if it's it. I don't know if it's old or new. Someone mentioned it to me. I read it. It is the best and I've I don't want to list what I've read. I don't want to compare, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I've read a lot. This is the most impactful, practical, paradigm shifting leadership book I've read in a very long time. Come on. I'm yeah. going to have to check it out. Man, it's so good. What do you like to do for fun? How do you decompress, relax? Oh, number one, video games. Come on. I'm still a gamer. Really? Now listen, I'm old play? school. I've been playing video games, number one, since Nintendo. <laughs> Some of y'all don't know anything about that. Come that's, on. That's old school. I played Nintendo uh, Nintendo. Up. Super Mario Brothers Nintendo. So, Come on. So, um, did you play NBA Jam and Tournament come on. Edition? All come on, yeah. he's on fire! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for the three, <laughs> yeah. So, video games, yeah. I love doing that. 
you know, my kids are into sports. Okay. So I love Get out playing there, around play with them. them. You know, I played basketball in college, so that's kind of, I know more about that than the other things that they play. So. So you played like, you played at your college. Yes. For your college team. Okay. Yeah. So I know more about that. So I play with them. I play that with them the most because that's mm -hmm. what I know about. So I love doing that. <laughs> so video games, sports activities with my kids. Um, I'm also a lounger, man. Yeah. I can hang Sit on the back, couch. Watch a movie or Netflix. Or laugh, something. laugh with people, laugh at people. Just a lounger. So I probably do more of that than anything. I do like movies from time to time. Okay. Um, I'm not an avid movie watcher, but, but that is something I do, and it does help me decompress. Yeah. Those are kind of like my top four or five. Come on, those are good. What college did you play for? So I played for Millsaps College in Jackson, okay. Mississippi. Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah, so I'm not familiar with any schools in um, Oklahoma that it would be comparable to, because it was a small liberal arts school, Division III. Uh, but yeah, I had a great experience there. That's Got to awesome. play all four years, and it was good. That's awesome. Well, what would you share just uh, as we're closing out right now, just with people out there that have a, a desire in their heart to become a leader that influences people, whether that's a pastor, a businessman out there, entrepreneur, um, but they want to grow in their leadership skills. What would you leave them with, encourage them with, maybe a last few thoughts? Yeah. Well, this is what I'm learning because I'm, I'm, it's amazing how when I first started out, I thought 12 years in, I would be much more uh, advanced than I am now. Uh, this is a lifelong journey. So this is what I've learned. I've learned a few things. Number one, that people want to follow you for two reasons. Competence or character, or three. Competence, character, or both. Who you are, what you can do, or both. Mm. They'll come to you for what you can do. They'll only stay with you for who you are. Mm. So I would say to someone, self-leadership is must be primary in leadership development. Like the most important person you will lead is you. And as you're so able good. to do that, right, it creates, I believe, an asset that outweighs. Although gift competence is important now, I'm not minimizing that. But I, what I've learned is that at some point with people, it doesn't matter who you are to the world it matters who you are to them. And so for me, that's huge. Self-leadership, developing yourself. And um, I found that to be the most important, <laughs> the most important asset, I think, in drawing and keeping the kind of people you want to have influence with and over. Mm, that's really good. It's really good. Well, we are so honored you're here, expectant, excited for you excited. to preach tonight. And, you know, again, we, uh, we've, Tulsa's been waiting for Darius to come <laughs> right here at Victory. We've been excited. I've had so many different church members come to me and they're going, I've never heard of Darius, but I'm excited. I'm really excited about him. I've got this expectancy that he's going to speak straight to me. So, hey, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you go to victory.com. You can see all the conference right there. Stream it live. And uh, stay connected to the Learning to Lead podcast. God bless you.